So a lot of companies are banning chat GPT due to concerns over data leakage and compliance issues. And the solution to that is to run generative AI on premise. So that's what we do. Bionic GPT gives you a familiar looking user interface connected to open source language models. And this enables your organization to uh, quickly give everybody access again to generative AI. Bionic GPT uses stan a standard API called the OpenAI RESTful API to connect to large language models. That means we can easily add new models to the system, as many as we want, actually. And then from the prompt, we can connect to a new model, the one I've just added here, in this case, 70 billion parameters. And then let's get uh, Bionic to start generating some code. So here I'm going to ask it to generate some Rust code. And off it goes again, talking to that new model that we've added. And this is already given a lot of the benefits of generative AI pretty quickly. So you, you know, generating emails, code, and so on and so forth. When you run generative AI in-house, you actually open up whole new use cases. So in this case, something called retrieval augmented generation, which basically means we can use company data to augment the AI and give us better results when we ask questions. So how does that work? Well, firstly, because we have the concept of teams, I'll create a new team, for example, human resources. Now I can go into data sets and create, uh, for example, recruitment guidelines here. And then we can upload documents to Bionic. Now these documents can, we support all lots of different formats, PDF, PowerPoint, Word. And you can see me here uploading different types of documents and we take those documents individually and in the background we pull out the text we convert that text into embeddings and those embeddings are stored into a vector database. So now that we've uploaded some documents, what can we do? Well, we can go back into our prompt. And then we can select the data sets tab and we can say which of our data sets we want to use as part of this prompt. And then from now on, whenever we use this particular prompt, it's going to search through those documents and use the most relevant documents to, to, uh, for the generative AI part. So for example here, I'm going to ask our HR consultant prompt to create a C++ job application using the company guidelines and we can see it running away there. When you think about generative AI in terms of teams, it kind of makes uh, RAG a lot easier because you can invite people into the teams, uh, create your data sets, the people in the teams know which data they want to use as part of their use case. And then when a use case is up and running, you can simply go into the prompt, change the permissions for that prompt and kind of deploy it to the team, or you could even deploy it throughout the whole company. Once you've created a prompt and attached data sets to it, um, you can then create an API key so that people can access your prompt programmatically and create things such as chatbots. So what we did with Bionic GPT from the very beginning is make it so that it's easy to install on a developer laptop or a relatively powerful laptop. So what I show here is from our documentation, we download a Docker Compose YAML file. Then I do Docker Compose up. Bionic's completely made up from uh, Docker containers. And then from there, we can access the front end. 
and gain access to the console. So web running Bionic GPT on a laptop is great for giving it a trial and maybe running a few test cases. The, the real power of Bionic GPT is when it's deployed across the enterprise and we can utilize Teams. Deployment is fully documented. We support Kubernetes and we've documented things like how to do Postgres, single sign-on, how we do infrastructure as code. And then uh, we're completely open source and all of our containers are generated into GitHub and you can see those containers right there. 